Hi everyone, I'm here with Stacy Madalinski and Angie McCrae, hosts of This Food, That Wine, and they're going to give us some tips about food and wine. So a lot of people, they wonder about the whole swirling right. thing, you know, you always see people swirling. It actually releases the aroma, it just makes it easier to smell. So you give the one a swirl, and then you stick your nose right in. Mm. Exactly. Oh, wow. You get a lot more aroma when you actually give it a little bit of a swirl. No. And then when you're tasting the wine, you think about not just how it tastes, but how it feels in your mouth. Once you swallow it, how long the flavors hang around. That's called the finish of a wine. So let's give this wine a taste. Mm. This is a really full-bodied white wine. Mm. It really fills your mouth. Mm. And I find once you've tasted it, it kind of hangs out in your mouth for a while. It's mm -hmm. still boosting you. It's kind of tart. That's mm -hmm. the finish of the wine, so it's got a nice long finish. For entertaining, you want to keep things as simple as possible. Like, that's the number one rule. So a great way to do that is to make a batch of soup mm -hmm. and then put them in little soup shooters. So you can do this in the winter and then have it nice and hot, or you can do it in the summer and have a nice cold mm. soup. And we've paired the Chardonnay with this creamy onion, like a roasted onion and garlic soup. You basically just cut some onions, throw in some garlic, some chicken stock, some wine, of course. <laughs> that you owe, and you usually cook with the wine that you're drinking, unless it's really expensive wine, and then just go with the same grape. It's a great way to match, and so down the hatch. Okay, all right, let's try it. So what's a good tip for people who want to who don't really know how to pair dishes, um, what's a good thing to keep in mind? Well, I think the most important thing, for sure, is balance. So you don't want, I mean, if you're going to have a really big, heavy piece of meat or something, like a, a steak or a cooked rare, it's got a lot of flavor, it's got a lot of texture. If you put it with a really light body wine, you're not going to taste the wine. So okay. it's, it's about balance, for sure. So this is a main that we have. It's ghost cheese stuffed pork tenderloin. Mm. And then it comes with a cherry reduction sauce. So in that sauce is just some red wine and some balsamic vinegar. It's super simple and super clean. So if you've got a main course that you love and you know how to cook all the elements, you can take that main course and turn it into an hors d'oeuvre. And it's amazing because the pork is the protein in the dish, but that's not the main flavor. Pork is actually a really mild flavor. Mm -hmm. So when you look at this, the cherry is definitely the dominant flavor. Mm -hmm. And we've actually paired it with a red wine. This is paired with Merlot. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the Planted Tree Merlot, so All the right. uh, partner wine for the Chardonnay. And uh, this one is a really soft, fruity wine. It's got quite a lot of body and quite a lot of flavor, but it's not harsh in your mouth. It's just kind of smooth and velvety. And so it works really well, even though it's a light meat and very delicate flavor uh, to the meat. It's not going to overpower it, but it really matches the flavor of the cherry. The Christine has a bit of a crunch, so get ready. <laughs> Mmm, those mm. cherries. Mm -hmm. See, the, that flavor is the one that really pops in your mouth. If you wonder, like, how am I going to make this sauce match what I'm, what I'm serving? Mm -hmm. Cook with the wine you're serving. It's like the easiest way to make a food match. Yeah, because you've already got the flavors of the wine in the dish, so mm -hmm. it's super simple. Uh, room temperature doesn't mean room temperature kitchen. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if, you put, if you're cooking a big dinner for everybody and you've got this beautiful wine that you've chosen for it, don't put the wine out on the counter while you're cooking because it'll actually heat up the wine a little bit and oh, then it's supposed yeah. to be just below room temperature. So actually popping your red wine in the fridge for like 15-20 minutes is a great way to really bring out the best of your red wine. If you let the wine kind of hang out in your mouth for a little bit and swirl it around and even kind of suck a little bit of air in over top of the wine in your mouth, it actually makes the flavors pop in your okay. mouth, so you actually taste more. Can you yeah. demo a slurp? Mm. <laughs> there you have it. It's not very um, classy, but you know, it's That's a great way done. to really make your the flavors pop in. Okay, so just to recap, I guess. Mm -hmm. If I, we, ha we could tell people three things to remember when it comes to food and wine pairing. Balance is one, yep, right? For sure. Um, picking the dominant flavor and trying to uh, match a wine to that. And then we've got mirroring and contrasting. Mirroring is when you're taking something like this soup, which is rich and creamy and buttery, and picking a wine that also has that nice rich texture to it. Which is too. mirroring, yeah. Exactly. And contrasting is finding something that's completely different but still works. So a really great example of that is something like uh, cheese, like a Stilton cheese or any kind of blue cheese with port. 
It's a classic pairing, but obviously the port is not mirroring the cheese. The cheese right. is salty and stinky and pungent, and the wine is smooth and sweet and intense, and it's a really nice balance. And yeah. then with cooking with wine, use mm -hmm. the wine you're going to drink in the food. Exactly. Yeah. Unless you have some really big, beautiful bottle of wine that you've been saving that's worth a good amount of money. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed the video on that last slide. I thought those Canadian ladies did a real nice job of keeping it simple and nice practical tips for us. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Now let's move into advanced wine and food pairings. Food types are the primary items analyzed in a dish to determine the wine match. So the more familiar we are with the basic products, the cooking techniques, and the sauces, the more effective we can be at modifying the food's weight the flavor, the texture levels, so they pair well with wines. On the food side, we say, when in doubt, throw it out. Here we say, when in doubt, serve something that kind of goes with anything. Some components in some styles of wine make them user-friendly or food-friendly. So if you're in doubt, use one of those that kind of goes with anything. User-friendly wines pair successfully with many food types and dishes because they have carbonated, like champagne, goes with a lot of stuff. They have moderate to high levels of acidity, so they can stand up to most foods. They're dry to slightly off-dry, meaning they're not too sweet, so they won't uh, clash with a lot of foods. They're medium-bodied, so they will neither be overwhelmed or underwhelmed by the food. They're moderate to low in alcohol, and they're low tannins or no tannins. So that would be um, wines that fit that description would work with just about any food. So carbonated, um, fairly high acidity, kind of dry, medium bodied, moderate to low alcohol, and uh, no, no tannins or low tannins. That's the pucker factor. What about when you're not serving food? You're just inviting some people over for wine, maybe before you go to the theater or before you go to dinner. When selecting a wine for an event where no food is to be served, you would do well to serve wines which come from very ripe, high in sugar, and low in acid grapes. Easy way to pick such a wine would be to select the wine grown in a warm climate. So get wines from Chile would be a, wine cl uh, a warm climate, for example southern France, I guess. We're going to reverse our strategy. We've been talking about wines and what food goes with the wine. Now we're going to start saying what, uh, starting with the food and saying what wine goes with that food. So if we're pairing appetizers, a dry wine like a Sauvignon Blanc would work well for scallops wrapped in bacon. And that's red, bold, underlined, that's everything, right? So you're going to remember that for the tests. What would you serve with scallops wrapped in bacon, Sauvignon Blanc? Or the question might be, Sauvignon Blanc would go well with scallops wrapped in bacon. Dry fortified wine, sherry or Madeira, would work well with appetizers like bichute wrapped in figs. Bubbles assist with refreshing the palate, so champagne is a good choice for appetizers where you're going from one kind of appetizer to another, so the champagne bubbles are going to kind of scrub your mouth and get you ready for the next different appetizer you'd like to try. And Pinot Blanc works well with sushi. Pairing strategies for salads. Vinaigrette based dressings work with white, rosé, or sparkling wines that are light to medium bodied. Ample acidity, sparkling wine, Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Grigio, Pinot Gris, Riesling, Unoaked Chardonnay. Dairy based dressings, grilled chicken or seafood go well with Chardonnay, Viognet, or Fumé Blanc. Dressings or accompaniments in salads such as honey, vinegar, soy, hoisin sauce, or peanuts work with Gewürztraminer, Chenin Blanc, German Riesling, or White Zinfandel.
preparing strategies for cheese. Now, before I move on to this slide and the slides coming up, there's a lot of words on the slides coming up. How much did I expect you to remember from all that? Not much. I'm going to point out to you what you need for the test. And other than that, I would suggest you make some notes, uh, general notes for yourself, but I'm not expecting you to memorize all this stuff. Just want you to be aware that such information exists. You can go to the book, you can Google it, and uh, just make some uh, general notes. So if you're talking about fresh, uh, soft, or soft, or rind ripened uh, cheeses, semi soft, pasta filata cheese, um, you know, write a couple of them down and say, uh, write down there that you'd use a medium to full bodied white wine with acidity or carbonation. Semi hard and hard cheeses work well with medium to full bodied red wines like Shiraz, Syrah, Sangiovese, and Tempranillo. Blue vein cheese has the ability to pair with robust red wines such as Cabernet Sauvignon, Port Blanc. Don't need to remember all that stuff. Just write a few notes and just know that it exists. So know that if you're going to serve blue vein cheese, you say, gee, there's certain wines that uh, go with that. I wonder what those were and go look at the book or do this slideshow again. Pairing with soups. Clear, simple soups work best uh, with light bodied acidic white wines, Riesling, Pinot Grigio, Pinot Gris, Blanc de Blanc, sparkling wine. Thin based soups with elements of vegetables, grain, or protein work with white wines, Sauvignon Blanc, un oak Chardonnay, reds like Pinot Noir, Sangiovese, Gamay, Cabernet Franc, Barbera, and Dolcetto. Puree or cream based soups work well with a weighty, full bodied white wine such as Chardonnay, Viognet, Blanc de Noir, sparkling wine, or a vintage champagne. Got some tongue twisters in here. Vegetarian based dishes work uh, well generally with uh, light and medium body white wines. Sparkling wine, rosés, light bodied red wines uh, pair best with foods that are absent of any meat, poultry, or seafood. Spicy ingredients like curry and chilies would work best with something to offset that, like with uh, sugar, such as Gewurztraminer, Riesling, Chenin Blanc. Sparkling wines, rosé. Tofu works well with uh, light bodied red wines like Dolcetto, Barbera, Pinot Noir, or Gamay. Risotto works with light bodied white wines such as Pinot Grigio, Riesling, or Pinot. Pasta based dishes. Meatballs, sausage, or bacon can work well with Pinot Noir, Barbera, Dolcetto, or Sangiovese. Shrimp, scallops, and bacon work well with light to medium bodied white wines such as Riesling, Pinot Grigio, or Sauvignon Blanc. Oil and cream based sauces work well with light to medium bodied white wines like Riesling, Pinot Grigio, Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc, Sauvignon Blanc. Cream sauces work well with Chardonnay. Cheese-based sauces work well with Shiraz, Syrah, Zinfandel. How much of that do I expect you to remember? Not much, but if you're interested and you serve a lot of pasta-based dishes, and of course you do, just jot a few notes, and other than that, you're going to run back to the slideshow or run to the book or Google it. Pairing strategies for spaghetti with sausage. Strongly flavored dish like spaghetti with sausage would pair well with Chianti Classico.